Guys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, it's BT Scambler back again. Listen, I'm going to make this a relatively short video, this one. Well, compared to the last one, anyway. Right, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the new Dragon Tower strategy. And I just really want to explain what it is. So, rather than open up the web page, I'm just going to show you in QBot. So, QBot has been running in simulation now for a number of days and it's done 25 million bets. Okay, we've done 25 million bets. And what I'm playing is is hard mode on Dragon Tower, which is a 50-50 win chance. And I'm not changing position. I'm literally statically staying in one position. And the only time it does change is if I restart the dice bot. So, and it randomly picks between one and two. Okay, and what I've done, if you, if you look here, look at the stats here, which is quite interesting. So, over this long period of run and test time, the maximum that I've seen is 21. And yeah, that's losses, but bear in mind, we also need to factor in the maximum, because this is a 50-50 win chance, the maximum win streak as well, because that could have been a loss streak. So it makes sense that that's hit 24 as well. So if you're going to play this, play this with your eyes wide open. Okay. So I put together a new spreadsheet. Right, so guys, so here's a new spreadsheet. So it's called Dragon Tower V6. So the whole principle behind this and there's been some changes in here so be very mindful of the fact is that um, in order to protect you guys uh, I want to cover the extreme events if you're going to play this play this cautiously okay and so what I've done here I've put in the metrics that you need to protect yourself up to minus 25 so it would crash at minus 25 I have never seen that that doesn't mean it can't happen okay and also the reason I've set it so high is the fact that you would want to leave this running for very long periods of time unattended so that's my goal as well you know what's the point of freedom if you've got to attend to it every bloody 10 minutes that's not fun for me so i'm not quite there with mine i'm on version 9 still and the coding that I'm, is going to be in discord which i'll show you in a moment is uh, going to be version 10 and it's going to be based around these metrics i'm just letting mine build up so that i've made I need to make around about yeah 90 profit on each account so it's easy for me to switch but ignore what i'm doing just um yeah just know that i'm suggesting that it should be done this particular way so now that everything is correct the multiplier per loss 104.3 percent is the minimum level that you can apply so this this row here along here this multiplier checker what it does do it checks how much profit you make on a win so it takes away what the win payer is then takes away the accumulated bet and so providing that's a positive number i.e you win more than you've lost in terms of accumulated bet that will remain green so there's a conditional rule conditional format and set there for both negative and positive so it's for example as I said, this is what's set to its base limit, and I think knowing this is useful for yourself, so that when if you're playing around with strategies or got ideas, you can do that. So if I change it to one hundred four point one percent, for example, you'll see it doesn't. After the fourteenth bet, it gets into a loss-making scenario. That's not good. That is not good. So we put that back, and you'll see that is now green to here and evermore that's an immensely useful tool to verify yeah the most multiplier that you add per bet and it was not just applying to dragon tower you've hopefully you find use in these spreadsheets beyond dragon tower but this has been hard coded with um, a delayed martin go so you see it's bets low 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 it's bets the minimum amount up to one two three four five losses in a row on the six one it goes in it goes up big jump and so this is what we call a delayed martyr go and it doubles down from there well more than doubles down 104.2 percent there and the idea being is that uh, we have two recovery pots now i've said for this for you and for me 
Um, the first recovery pop, which is going to be automated, which is 2,750. Yeah, so that, that's gone in here. So that it would have crashed to 17, which is, yeah, that's going to happen not too frequently. Um, but it could happen. And, and then you manually have to put over the second pop, which I'm saying you need 21,004 to cover you up to 25 losses to protect against the the unyet proven number I don't know whether Dragon Tower can actually get to 25 I suspect it probably can at some point but if you got there and you've, you're protected for that then that's the best you can do isn't it okay now the coding for that I just want to show you some Visual Studio code here's the coding for it the bits that we're interested in really is one is the stage number, so that's going to be like, like the version number. It's number 10. I'm determined that we're in difficulty level 2, which is hard, and the number of eggs that we're choosing is 1. So if you wanted to change this, you know, play around with this. Uh, if you want it in master mode, and yeah, if you want it in easy mode, for example, and you want it to go right to the top of the tower, you know, you can change that. And the number of eggs, I think it's 7 uh, for the top. Yeah, and what a base bet is, how much to increase on loss. And as I said before, if you see my previous video, there's an oddity around calculating out floating points in JavaScript. It seems to be a bug. That, believe it or not, equates to 104.2%. You just have to take my word for that. That is just how it is. It takes a little while to get your head around, but that is the only way that I could get it to exactly simulate the numbers that are in Excel. You know, if I'd said previous bet times 1.04.2 it comes back with a different number some weird function within JavaScript and the do bet function here is basically keep keeping control of the balance really so I'm saying vault every 20 TOX profit do very highly recommend you, you vault you know as you go along 20 it takes a little while to get to 20 so don't worry about vaulting too much you know there's a thing with uh, stake is that if you vault too frequently it can prevent you from using a vault so you don't want to be vaulting too frequently so 20 seems to be a really respectable number so when the balance is above 190 it will basically dump whatever's in the balance and leave behind 170 so I'm saying here deposit to the vault everything in the balance so it gets from the, does an API request, you know, tells it to what the current uh, currency is and what the current balance is and leaves it and then takes off 170. So it takes put whatever's in the balance minus 170 and puts that into the vault and that will leave you exactly 170 in the start balance. So this is good for, for many things. So first off, when you, so the first benefit is if you just if you start with a balance higher than 190 to begin with it doesn't matter as long as it's above 170 but uh, if you start above 190 you know that it's going to automatically when you start the bot put that into the vault okay and that's useful you haven't got a bob of cleaning things down it will automatically cleanse itself now this is problematic if you don't have more than 170 in there and the second option which is which is immensely useful as well is this because this is all done under the, under the context of if win and so it's only reading that line of code if it's reached a win then this also captures the recovery part as well you crash you lost you lost you lost it's not reading that part of code until and it's called the recovery part it keeps gambling and gambling until it hits a win now, when it will hit a win, the recovery pot, straight away, it's going to deposit everything in your balance and leave behind 170. So that's a cleansing mechanism for managing how we move the recovery pot back into the vault. So it's just done within that very simple line of code. So a really neat way of doing it. Yeah, so we just base if win, if not, yep, increase on loss. And if the current street equals minus, exactly equals minus 5, then the next bet is going to be that figure and the reason I put the figure in it rather than a multiplier of the balance is because I've worked on the principle that delayed martingale increasing the multiplier pushes out your crash point but increasing the balance 
maintains exactly the same figure. I mean, the maths is just absolutely perfect for this. So there was no need for me to actually put in a division here. It could just simply be a hard-coded number. And I want that to be consistent because what I really want to do in order to make this safe for everybody is to push out the, the crash point. Don't take on more risk. Do your testing. Know the limits. This is tested with 1 million TRX to pretend balance in, in uh, Qbot because I really wanted to test the extremities. And we can see here 24 and I've covered it up to 25 in this code and in a spreadsheet as well. So I'm going to upload all of this, including this video, to Discord. Yeah, so I put the, I've already put the revised spreadsheet up there. I'm going to put this code up here as well. So it's going to be version 10. Okay, it's going to be Dragon Tower Martingale 10, V10. And yeah, that would be in the, don't know, you know, the Alphaverse code section. Right, nearly at the end of this video, guys. So if you go to Alphaverse uh, Discord is here and if you go to Alphaverse code which is here I've uploaded it here the latest Dragon Tower V10 based on 50-50 wind chance on hard mode with delayed martingale that's where you'll find it if you've got any questions you know what to do you need to just message me and I will do my damnedest to help you okay guys I'll speak to you all again very soon